hitting, and I apologize, but I don't know if it'll render well here. But it looks clean to me. It looks pretty good. I actually, I actually like it. Alright, what is going on everyone? It is Pyrogue aka Mo back with another tutorial. I had to re-record this one because the last one I recorded it corrupted and now I gotta make this tutorial again. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so first off, you want to go ahead and make your new project. I already made mine, and all you got to do is just make a composition. So for the new composition, um, I'm going to name it Rotation. And you could do 1280 by 720, and uh, it doesn't matter about the frames. I might do 30 frames per second just so it will just be clean. We're just doing a rotation, and we're not using any, like, shape layers or anything like that. Just some footage. So I put the duration to one minute, and we're going to do that right there. So go ahead and import your footage, guys. Um, make sure it doesn't have black bars because it won't be as smooth because when it rotates, it will it'll be, like, black strips on the outside once we add the motion tile. You'll see what I mean later. So go ahead and import your footage. I got some gameplay footage of when I was playing before. I finally got my footage fixed up and everything like that. So what I will do now is we will start the rotation process. So I'll go right here to start zooming in and stuff like that. Uh, what we're first going to do is we're just going to go uh, to the middle in between both of these. And what you want to do is you want to hold shift, click both of these, and then press R. So now what we will do is keyframe the rotation. I'll turn the audio off real quick. Um, keyframe the rotation, and we'll go to the bottom one. This is the one that's going to build up the rotation and then and then speed up as it gradually goes. And then the second one, it will already be fast coming in, and it will ease into the next spin. I'll show you guys what I mean now. All right, so now we're going to uh, keyframe this 90. And determining how far we'll go back, we will just go back around 30 frames maybe. So what we will do is we will go shift and page up, one, two, three, and that brought us about around 30 frames back, and now we will keyframe that to zero. Uh, for the next one, we will do the exact same thing, except we're gonna go shift page down, and we're going to go one, two, three, and then we're gonna keyframe this zero as well. I forgot to keyframe this one. We keyframe this one right here. We're gonna keyframe it negative 90. Negative 90. All right, so now, you see right here, we're already starting to spin, okay? You see these black bars, we'll fix those later, but right now, we're gonna try to make it smooth before we even get there, all right? So what we wanna do now is we want to highlight both of these, and then you wanna go F9, or you could right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, which also shows you the commands for that one. So it's F9 right there. So what you wanna do now is you want to go to the graph editor, and if you're if you are in math class, you know what to do. Uh, if you have this, you shouldn't have this. But if you do, then you switch it to Edit Value Graph instead, instead of Edit Speed Graph. That's for something else. So if you do Edit Value Graph, you can click this, and then you'll get this right here. And if you have both of them, then turn off Show Reference Graph because I don't know why that would be on, but I never have that on. So remember what I told you guys about the build up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this like this right here. You can see you have a build up. So it starts off slow. So it starts off slow, neutral position, slow, speeds up, and then we're going to have this one be fast, and then it'll ease in. So, you guessed it, we're going to go ahead and easy ease this one, and then we're going to go to the graph editor, and this time, instead of doing it like this and build up, we're going. it's already going to be fast, just like that, and then we're going to drag this one across a little bit too. So it's gonna be like boom, boom, like that right there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have, we're gonna get rid of the black bars. Now um, what we can do, or the effect that you'll need for this is motion tile. You could always go up to here to effect and then stylize and then motion tile will be down there somewhere. So um, yeah, what we will do is we'll add motion tile and the output width and the output height is the main thing you need to focus on. Don't worry about the tile stuff. Just do this. And then we'll set it to around, you can set around 300, 400. I usually set it to 400. And then we can just copy this. Copy this effect. So control C and copy the effect while you have it selected. Go here, control V, and then there you go. It uh, has the same thing right there. So now it's gonna be like this, boom. Boom. 
just to spin. Sometimes it works better when your footage is zoomed in. Sometimes uh, it works better if you have zoomed in footage, and that that really works out more with uh, with real life footage. But um, most of the time, what I'll do with this is if I'm spinning and stuff like that, um, I'll have like a uh, motion blur on it. Like I have real smart motion blur. Or you can do CC Force Motion Blur if you guys really want to. Now, CC Force Motion Blur, just FYI, it makes it, um, it takes a longer time to render when you have CC Force Motion Blur. But if for a small effect like this, it'll probably do, like, it'll probably take a little bit of time. But if it's, if you don't have it on the entire thing, like if you have it just on the spin, it should be fine. Like if you have it from from right here, like where it gets like speed, like really sped up. Right here to like right here, you should you could do the CC force motion blur. But otherwise, you, everything else should be fine, and it, it should be it should be good. So basically, this is the this is the effect. I should have shown it in the beginning. I hope I did. If I didn't, then I apologize. But I don't know if it'll render well here. But it looks clean to me. It looks pretty good. I actually I actually like it. Yeah, this is pretty clean. Some people add blur. You can add blur, like a Gaussian blur or a uh, a camera lens blur. You can, add, you can add one of those. And, um, oh, I didn't even add anything. To an adjustment layer. Uh, these are just possible things that you can do. Just, uh, you know, just add like 10 and boom, 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 boom. Alright, there you go. <clears throat> so you can do that. Um, or you can use Gaussian blur. I I don't um I don't oh my gosh can I <laughs> uh, Gaussian blur. Uh, I do not recommend using any of the directional blurs unless you need to. It's, it's up to you. But uh, there's a lot of blurs that you can use, and it, it just it just makes all the difference, you know. Cause that the blurs work well when you have it when you have it like with it, you know. You just want to make sure that it's not choppy, none of that stuff. Um, but Gaussian blur and camera lens blur work well. Just that uh, camera lens blur has more um, has more options with it. I mean, yeah, Gaussian blur is just this right here. But you know, it kind of serves a, a same purpose though. Yeah, it kind of serves the same purpose. But um, yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I try to be elaborate as possible. Uh, just please give me some constructive criticism on what else um, or how this tutorial was. And if it helped you, please leave a like. And um, share with your friends if they need help, you know, we using this. And, uh, you know, uh, link me some stuff if you use it in one of your, your projects. Just, just let me see it. And, um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, peace out. Comment what type of tutorials I should make next. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later. And uh, peace.